All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another video with the events calendar. My name is James and joining me in today's video is Leah. Leah, thanks for being here. Thank you, James. So Leah, who are you and what do you do with regards to the events calendar? I'm one of the product owners for the events calendar. So that means that I'm the one making a lot of decisions about what features we're going to build next and what those features include and how they're going to work. I work with the developers, the designers, QA, uh, kind of everybody to bring a feature from an idea all the way to release. Very cool. Um, so in today's video, we are going to be talking about um, what we call uh, internally our legacy views or our version one uh, versus our, our new updated views or version two. We're talking about this because we're getting pretty close to um, completely and totally deprecating the V1. And so naturally that's going to, um, there's going to be a lot of questions uh, from our customers regarding this move. And so we're hoping that in this video, we can address some of those questions ahead of time. Um, so my first question is, how long ago did we release this updated calendar view? Yeah, so the the upgraded views were like the big feature that we released in the events calendar 5.0. That was back in January 2020, uh, so quite a while uh, at this point. And then um, we uh, we were for quite some time supporting both uh, the legacy views, since we had plenty of users still using those, uh, as well as the upgraded views. And then um, in August of 2021, we officially ended support for the legacy views, also known as V1, uh, which means that we were no longer fixing bugs on V1 or um, uh, we weren't able to, for example, help customers uh, with with customizing on V1, that kind of thing. Uh, and then this year, um, in February, we officially started uh, actually removing um, and deprecating pieces of V1 from the plugins. And that is a process that we've been continuing, and it will be finalized in the events calendar 6.0, which is our next big, big release coming up soon. And at that point, uh, the old views will uh, be fully removed and everybody will be using the upgraded views. Very cool. So as a user, how can I even tell if I'm still using the legacy V1 or if I've already updated to the V2? Sure. So one way to tell is if you go into your event settings and you go to the display tab, there's an option that's labeled use updated calendar designs. And that has a check mark. You are using the upgraded designs, V2, you're good to go. If that box is not checked, that means you are still using the legacy views. You can also tell by looking at the front end, looking at your the calendar view itself, because they're quite different. Uh, for example, on the upgraded views, the events bar where you can search by keyword or change the view, it's got a white background instead of gray. In month view, a multi-day event has a, it actually spans across the days instead of being listed multiple times. In list view, in V2, the date is shown quite prominently on the left. Um, so there's some major visual differences, but the setting can tell you uh, what you have on your site. Yeah, that's helpful because a lot of people I think have heavily customized based on yeah. one. So they might not be able to tell visually which one they're on because of all the customizations. So knowing where to go find that in settings is, is definitely helpful. For sure. So do I have to switch to V2? Ah, a very good question. So the short answer is no, you don't have to. But <laughs> if you don't, there's some pretty um, important consequences. So you don't have to switch to V2 if you're still using the legacy views. But what's important to know is that going forward, all of our new features, all of our bug fixes, Everything that we're working on that's new and cool and helpful for your site is going to require V2. In fact, 
we already have features uh, that we've released that require V2. So if you're on V1, you're already missing out. Uh, we have a summary view. We have uh, new subscribed calendar features. And in the, in the future, in terms of stuff that uh, is, is coming out, if you're still on V1, you'll be missing out on any new views we release. Be missing out on the upcoming uh, recurring events system that's coming out, which includes series and some really cool editing features on recurring events. A lot of flexibility there. Tickets for recurring events. That is something that's on the roadmap. That is something that's going to require V2. And as I said, too, it also fixes. So when we get a bug reported, we're fixing it for V2 users. We can't be also fixing it for legacy views. Um, so yes, technically, if you really want to, you can stay on V1. I highly recommend that you take the time, if you haven't already, to move to V2. It is absolutely the best move for you long term. And we're not able to support you if you stay on V1, which is tough. Yeah, we've we've already been basically supporting two different code bases for two years. So um, that's just not sustainable. It's um, really hard. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, for most people, it's probably not going to be a big deal. It's a matter of clicking a checkbox. Their calendar is going to look nicer than it did before, and they're going to yeah. have access to features. Um, but for some people, like I mentioned earlier, who have done a lot of um, styling customizations based on the V1, obviously when they click that checkbox, they're basically going to lose all the styling customizations or, or a lot of them that they made. So yeah. they're going to be asking the question, why are you removing uh, V1 legacy views? And I think we alluded to it a little bit already, but maybe you could um, talk a little bit about why exactly we are we're deprecating that completely. Yeah. Well, first I want to touch on one thing you said, you know, folks who have customized a lot will see a more major change. That we we knew that going in. Like we knew that this, while this change is really important, we knew that it would be tough for customers who had who had done a lot of customizing. And that is why we committed to having such a long time where we were fully supporting both versions. Because the idea was that that gives our customers enough time to adjust customizations, to test their site with the new views, to talk to their developer, you know, if you're working with someone or your designer. So we, we know that this is tough for folks. And we took steps to try to ease that by giving people time. Now we are getting to the point where folks are, are, you know, it's a little closer to crunch time here since we're actually getting ready to fully remove those pieces. Um, but we, we hope that folks have been able to be working on this. And if you haven't, now it's the time. So your question, why are we removing these? So the legacy views are a decade old. They were a part of very, very early versions of the events calendar. What that means is that the design is, is outdated and there were quite a few uh, sort of underlying issues as well. Issues with navigation, performance, security, code standards. And these are things where maybe it's not so obvious when you're just looking at the calendar, you know, it can feel like it's just a visual change. But those underlying issues made it very difficult for us as a team to maintain our plugins and to build on them, to build and improve, you know, to add new features. So part of the point of the new views, besides the awesome visual improvements, thanks to our designers, is the fact that now we have better navigation, better performance, better security, higher standards. And that means it's easier for us to maintain. We can fix bugs faster. Uh, we can Not only we can fix bugs faster, we can fix bugs faster and more thoroughly. So it's less likely that some other little problem sneaks through and we can build on these. So with V2, we can add new views. We can add new features. It's much easier for us to do that. And if it's easier for us as a team 
to add fixes and features, it's better for our customers. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to to note that it's not just we're, it's not just a new style.css file. This is um, there's been a lot of improvements behind the scenes with the code, like you said, to improve performance and, and customization. Um, yes. There's more filters and actions and stuff for for the developers out there to really um, customize things. So there's a there's a lot of improvements beyond just it looks prettier than it did before. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So speaking of customizing, um, and, and this could be a whole two hour long video on its own, but um, <laughs> you know, sort of briefly, how can I customize my V2 calendar? Once I click that checkbox and upgrade to the new views, what are my options for customizing? Well, uh, as you just hinted at, um, V2 has tons of customizing options, uh, hooks, filters, templates, all sorts of goodies. Now, if you hear that and you say, that's maybe beyond my technical expertise, that's cool too. We got something for you know the non-coders out there, the WordPress customizer, which we had previously for V1, it had some options. Now with V2, we've got even more customizer options and we're adding more in our releases. So check out the WordPress customizer. It's a great way to um, get your calendar uh, styled just how you want, matching your theme or your branding, whatever you need. So that's a really great option for the folks who do want to dig in to the CSS or the code. We've got tons of articles in our knowledge base, and that includes uh, articles uh, specifically about how the V2 views work with the new templates, because there are new templates in V2 uh, that are different from the ones in V1. So we've got lots of resources out there for folks, uh, tools and resources. Uh, so hopefully um, V2 opens up even more customizing options for our customers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, we'll try to remember to include a link in the description of this video with some uh, some links to, um, like she mentioned, we have some articles that talk about how do you customize the counter. And there's even a video that kind of walks you through options for people who don't know anything about code, like the customizer and all the way to options for people who are very familiar with code and really want to just customize the heck out of everything. Um, we have options for, for everybody to jump in there and customize stuff. So I think the last question for you today, Leah, is will you help me switch from V1 to V2? What kind of support can I expect from the TC team in this move? Yeah, that's a great question. So as we noted, we're not, we're, you know, I've been saying we're not supporting V1, right? But what I mean by that is that we're not helping people to fix problems on V1 itself. If you are somebody who are still, you're still using the legacy views and you want to move, that is the sort of thing that we hope to help with. That said, we have hundreds of thousands of users. Unfortunately, we can't help everyone one-on-one. -on -one, and that is part of why we have worked really hard to put a ton of resources in the knowledge base so that people can find answers for themselves, um, you know, get help. Uh, we have an article all about testing your site with V2. That'd be another great one to link, James. Um, so we worked hard to put out those resources so that those would be available to anyone. Also, if you're one of our premium users with a license to one of our paid plugins, you can, of course, contact us through our support help desk, and we will do our best within our available scope of support to help you make that transition from V1 to V2. You know, since V2 has been available for quite some time now, we've already been helping people, folks who you know, moved over right away or in the last few months have been working on making this change. Um, and our support team um, has been doing a really great job and they're here and ready to help if you are uh, ready to make that transition. Absolutely. <clears throat> and on that note, if you're watching this video and you switch to V2 and, um, you know, you notice we have a lot of snippets that have gone out into the, the world and we have some extensions that we've developed. And if you come across a snippet that was provided to you from one of us or, or an extension that suddenly stopped working when you switched to V2, uh, let us know. Um, we, we can't promise an immediate turnaround on those things, but those are things that we're trying to identify and, and fix. 
um, so that those snippets will work uh, for V2 because a lot of those were written before V2 even existed. And so they're just definitely not going to work. So let us know anything that, that we've provided you in the past that suddenly doesn't work now that you've clicked that checkbox. Let us know and, and uh, we'll take a look at that. So Leah, this was awesome. I, I thank you so much for joining me today to, to make this video. I'm sure the, the watchers will appreciate it as well. And uh, for those watching, thanks for, for tuning in and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone.